within weeks of him becoming uh, Prime Minister of the DRC, he was deposed. Within months, he was assassinated. The toughest question was a young woman who came in front, picked up the mic, and she told Hillary Clinton, if tomorrow I'm the Prime Minister of the Congo, will you assassinate me? Good afternoon, everyone. I've been given a task to speak a bit around the uh, competition that's happening with the, uh, the United States and China in DRC. It's very important because the connection between China and DRC has always been lost. Patrice Lumo, one of our democratically elected leaders, was assassinated. Progressive forces came together uh, to organize, to transform the Congo in the 60s, and China was actually supporting the Congolese. Do you recognize anyone in here? Right, this is happening in Tiananmen Square. Ah, I think I'm pronouncing it right. Tiananmen, is that correct? 700,000 people in 1964 came out in support of the Congolese people. As Mao was speaking, sharing about why we needed to side with the Congolese who were fighting against imperialism. But the history of China and Africa, in particular the Congo, doesn't start in 1964. China has always been with the African people in the struggle. Uh, beyond now, the general discussion is always around infrastructure, but you were there when the Africans were fighting for independence, provided technical support, material support, intellectual support uh, for us. And our struggle is ongoing up until today. But I wanted to kind of share where we are. Right in the heart of Africa, everything is there. And there was always a discovery. The cobalt, the coltan, the gold, the diamond, the oil. You know, it's estimated that the oil reserve, the 27 oil blocks that the DRC government is selling, is estimated at about $160 billion. Um, and they've put in an auction since last year. The 100 million people, where they're saying in about 10 to 15 years, is going to double. Right? The population of Congo is going to get to 200 million, which is about a quarter of uh, Africa's population today. And with that population, half of them, half of the population is under the age of 18. So we have a vibrant youth fighting and organizing for a new Congo. But of course, we do have also uh, a government. That's what I wanted to focus on around the competition to understand the complexity of what is actually unfolding. Now, Patrice Lumumba, democratically elected in 1960, wanted one thing for the DRC. It was very clear as he organized. He wanted the resources of the Congo to benefit the Congolese people. At the time, one of the most critical minerals was cobalt. There were two places where you could get it, USSR and DRC. So within weeks of him becoming uh, Prime Minister of the DRC, he was deposed. Within months, he was assassinated, and he created a global outcry. But his idea has continued up until today, where the people of the Congo are still striving uh, for change. But then in 1997, right at the end of the First Congo War, uh, the leader who took power through an invasion backed by the United States and the United Kingdom, uh, the leader was Laurent Desiré Kabila. Uh, you know of him for people on the left, from Che Guevara's uh, diary in the DRC, he speaks of him. When Che Guevara came in the Congo in 1965, he connected with uh, the movement fighting for the liberation of the Congo at the time, led by Laurent Desiré Kabila. And of course, the mission was not successful. No. Che Guevara left. He said something very important at the time. He said that if the leaders of the Congo are people such as Laurent Desiré Kabila, Congo will be in bondage for centuries to come. Right? And guess who the United States chose? Laurent Desiré Kabila. But there is something also a bit uh, contradictory about his uh, position. On one hand, he was backed by the United States. But on the other hand, because of also his uh, movement, he was close to the left. So his first visit in the East here in uh, Asia was uh, he took a trip to China from the 14th of December to the 20th of December. 1997. Not that China did not have relations with the U.S. and the Mobutu, who was the president before, 
but this was an opening of the current engagement of China in the DRC. It's 1997 visits coming to uh, China. A few years later, he was assassinated, and then his son was uh, uh, took power in 2001. Were actually from the left. They're actually communists, underground communists within the government. For about four years, working with them, work, uh, pushed him to actually come to China. So in his visits in 2005, meeting uh, with the leaders here in China, it was agreed that it was time for China to support the DRC. The project that they came together with was how do we develop the infrastructure of DRC? The model that they chose was we are going to build your infrastructure in exchange of mineral resources. And the agreement was signed on the 22nd of April 2008. It was a $9 billion deal. What's the model? $6 billion for infrastructure, build the roads, hospitals, and things that the country need in terms of infrastructure. $3 billion. Right, the remaining billion was a joint project between the DRC government and China, China Railway Group Limited, Sino Hydro Corporation, where they will go into the uh, exploitation of our resources, of the, the proceed of the sale of the minerals, will pay for the six billion dollar. Right, so it's a 25 years project. Now, what does that mean? It means that at the end of the project, Congo had zero debt. Right? And this is a model that China had used already in Angola and in Brazil. You will be surprised what happened in 2009. Anybody remember 2009? I remember 2009. And I hope I will remind you what happened in 2009 if we play a short video of a famous person in 2009 in DRC. I'm at Unikin. Mrs. Clinton. We've all heard about the Chinese contracts in this country. The interferences from the World Bank against this contract. What does Mr. Clinton think through the mouth of Mrs. Clinton? And what does Mr. Mitmutombo think on this situation? Thank you very much. Wait, you want me to tell you what my husband thinks? My husband is not the Secretary of State, I am. <laughs> so you ask my opinion, I will tell you my opinion. I'm not going to be channeling my husband. So some people in the West have seen this video, right? And as you watching, you're probably getting very angry at the young Congolese who ask about her husband. My lot was lost in translation. That's not what the student asked. This was not the toughest question, by the way. The toughest question was a young woman who came in front, picked up the mic, and she told Hillary Clinton, if tomorrow I'm the Prime Minister of the Congo, will you assassinate me? Wow. Right? So there is actually a New York Times article that kind of mentioned that question, right? They were very, very tough question. These students, and many young students really understood what the China was doing in 2008 after the Sandy Accord. And there was an influence, right? In the context of the Congo in 2009, Congo had $14 billion of debt from the World Bank. Most of this debt are odious debt, going all the way back to the Belgian colonial time, where we as an independent country had to repay. So the World Bank and the IMF told the Congolese government, if you want us to forgive your odious debt, you need to renegotiate the Chinese contract. That was already the pressure after April of 2008. And it was ongoing. Uh, Assistant Secretary of, uh, of uh, African Affairs, Carson, flew before her to DRC in 2008, end of 2008. As he flew, in his press conference, he spoke again about the Chinese contract that he needed to be renegotiated. It, was, it did not happen. Then she came, and the student asked, we see the interference of the World Bank and IMF around the Chinese contract. 
and ask her, what do you think? The translator say, what does your husband think? That's not what the student said. But regardless of the context, she never answered the most important question asked by a student in Kinshasa and by the U.S. interference, and that question was never answered. And what happened when she left Kinshasa? The $9 billion deal became $6 billion. She was there for two weeks. By the time she flew out, renegotiation started. The Chinese ambassador at the time, interviewed by the Financial Times, said, the World Bank and IMF, I'm not paraphrasing, the World Bank and IMF are blackmailing the Congolese government. Direct quote from the Financial Times. So in the end, the project was not what it was originally intended. So fast forward to 2000, uh, as you look in the press today, looking into the Chinese contract, there are a lot of discussions around the DRC has to renegotiate the Chinese contract. When COVID started, President Xi in January had a call with President Chiseke. And the discussion was, one, forgiving the debts. Uh, I think it was about 50, $58 million was forgiven from some of the loans that China provided to DRC as uh, alleviation for COVID uh, during the time. She calling was to make sure that the program is still ongoing. And then surprisingly, President Felix Shisekedi, who's the current president, around April, due to the pressure of the United States, called for another renegotiation of Chinese contract. So I'll share with you the structure of the loan. And I'll share with you how now it's actually terrible for the Congolese what is happening. But if it's not three billions, what is it that they're gonna renegotiate, right? So what is it, if I have to look at it from a technical perspective, uh, what is it that Congo is getting in the, nine, the original nine billion? 68% was China and 32% was the DRC. It is low, right? You can say maybe 49 to 50 or 51 and so on. But no one in DRC today provided DRC with 32% in the stake in the project. Not only that, Glencore, which is a Swiss company operating at the New York Stock Exchange, which was just found last year, right, liable for corruption in DRC for bribing Congolese politicians, and they had to pay I think 200, over 200 million dollars in fine from the US Department of Justice. Do you know what Congo get from that mine? Anyone can guess? 1%, 2%? Oh, she guessed correct. Glencore, which has two mines, Mutanda Mining and Katanga Mining, in that stake, right? They, what, what is Glencore? Glencore gets the cobalt in the RC. And the number one buyer of cobalt is Tesla. So every Tesla that you see in the world today has the cobalt that come from Mutanda Mining and Katanga Mining, which is in the RC, right? That stake, Congo gets zero. But there's another example of a Chinese company that's actually doing uh, the things right. I need to actually get the name of the company itself. Somidez is a non-ferrous uh, metal mining in DRC. The DRC get 49% and China get 51%. No one gives Congo 49%. Right? But in the press, as is, uh, you hear, you will not know all these type of details in terms of development. But why is there a switch? with Felix from Kabila, right? There is a change of government, there is a new president. Felix Shisekedi, arguably, depending on what you read, was not elected by the Congolese people. The first government to recognize the election of 2018 was the United States. He is literally in the hand of the United States. And there are some contradictions in the government. So as his first travel internationally was actually Washington, D.C. He traveled to the U.S. in April of 2019, went to the World Bank, went to the IMF, met some mining companies. So he had guarantees that the West will support him. And the U.S., whispering in his ears, 
you need to renegotiate the Chinese contract and give us control of cobalt because cobalt is essential for the current uh, technological advance around the world. And the US has been successful because this December, they were able to sign an agreement between the Congo and Zambia, where they signed a memorandum of understanding where Congo's cobalt today is directly funneled to the United States. That brings into question what will happen to China Bolombina, which has the largest copper and cobalt reserve in the DRC. So this is why the CEO of China Bolombina has been going to the DRC often to try to understand what is actually unfolding. What I wanted to share in my presentation is to understand Congo's role in, global, uh, in modern day technology, how games are played, depending on who is the leader, what is actually in writing and how it's actually benefiting people. But there are a lot of misinformation around what China is doing in DRC, particularly the mining, because not enough researchers are providing information uh, that presents uh, the fact. I think I will end there, and I hope in our exchange and discussions, we'll be able to get more information. Know that the people of the Congo, in the, everything I share, the number one concern right now is to have a peaceful country where they control their land and resources, they understand the contradictions of what's happening at the government level, and they are hoping in the struggle, they can also connect with ordinary people around the world so that we decide how we use the profit for our land to build our roads, our hospitals, our schools, and be a better human being and contributing to the humanity. Thank you.